Hey, and welcome to Rapid Flow. My name is Eric. This is my long-term review of the Session Desk Gustav Studio Furniture. I've had this uh, close to four years now, so I feel like I'm in a good position to share with you what I think is great about it, uh, what I think could be improved, and generally how it holds up as a piece of dedicated studio furniture. Now, before we start at Rapid Flow, we do everything we can to make you faster in the studio. If you produce electronic music, we have a fantastic template. A lot of the instruments in the studio here were sampled with outboard gear, all put into the template. It's all in MIDI, so you can express your creativity. And uh, if you like this kind of content or also gear reviews, tests, uh, things that we do, then definitely hit subscribe and hit the notification bell because as you've probably noticed, YouTube's algorithm has just started pushing out the most sensational thumbnails and uh, titles it can get. So if you wanna see more of our content, the notification bell will actually make sure that you see when we upload a video. All right, with that out of the way, let's dive in. Let me show you the Session Desk Gustav and uh, ins and outs of it. Okay, so here we are with uh, yeah, like a frontal view of what this desk looks like. This is what you would see if you have this in your studio. First off, one thing that I really like about it is generally the sizing, the dimension, the ergonomics of it are really well done. Uh, just like, you know, this small touch of just having the wood sort of uh, slant down here, the way they've sanded into it so that you can see the wood grain. It's a really nice touch. It's really practical because nothing worse than having a hard edge at the end of your table. So that's like, yeah, you can see it also in the way that the angles are of uh, where the speakers would lean in if you were placing them up on these little speaker podests where I actually have have uh, my uh, TFT displays and also the the width of the table surface is really well chosen. It's not huge but you could actually fit two APC40 MK2s right next to each other. I used to also have that and as you can see I have a bunch of equipment up here. All my essentials are in easy reach. It's it's just right actually the amount of space here. Now one thing that I think is core to know is what they've done absolutely right is the height of the table. I think it conforms to like the DIN norm, the Deutsche Industrie norm, which is, I think it's like 74 centimeters and it's just right. I'm one meters 80, so I'm kind of on the tallish side, but not huge. But I know that there are studio tables that are, you know, even like three, four, five centimeters higher than this. And if you're all day sitting at this kind of like, you know, bunched up because your desk is too high that's a horrible feeling uh, like nothing worse than a working surface that's not at the right height so that is something that they've done really really well uh, it does have feet on the bottom so you could actually raise it a bit more if you wanted i think they're generally for leveling uh, but you can do that and the beauty of what they've managed to do is that when you add the optional keyboard tray you can still sit here comfortably and have your legs under the keyboard tray but you can fit in a pretty substantial synthesizer, something like the Waldorf Iridium here, and you know, and, and pull this all the way up. So it's like a two, three point system for the keyboard tray. Uh, or you can have it in this position, which is you basically just see the keys if you're using it like a MIDI controller. One little downside here is that this doesn't slide in any further because of the dimensions of the table. But actually, I think it's really cool because you still have the MIDI keyboards accessible. But if you want something that totally disappears, then just be aware of that. You can actually set this uh, at multiple heights. So if you have uh, some kind of a uh, master keyboard controller that's not so high, you can bring this up a little bit or you can also lower it a bit further. For me, this feels just right because because I can sit here with my legs under this edge and uh, get close to the to the table without uh, hitting my legs and things like that. Just something to be careful of because I honestly don't think there's a better way to do it. But if you do get the keyboard tray, this is an edge that you can hit your knee against really painfully. I've done it twice and a friend of mine that visited the studio did it also. So if you're rolling around on chairs here too quickly and you hit this edge, it's really intense. But I honestly don't see a better way to do that because this needs to slide through there. So maybe put some gaffer tape on here or something. Maybe that's something I could do. But I guess once you've done it, you know. But you've been warned, beware of this edge here because that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's intense <laughs> if you meet that another way. So now let me show you uh, another aspect, of course, that is great to have, and that's really the difference between using just some table and a piece of studio furniture, is that this has dedicated 19-inch slots for your equipment. Uh, this is nine units, so nine HE of space that you get, but the cool thing is that it's on rails, so it's kind of modular. You can um, 
choose exactly where you will put the devices. So I'm not using all nine because I have some air gaps between the devices. Uh, but the fact that it's a rail and that you can adapt that as you need is really great. Nothing worse than something that has like fixed points and then you're stuck with putting the devices either directly above each other or leaving a huge gap. Um, so that's really well done. Session Desk will let you know what these rails are if you need and you can actually also order them to place uh, in the bays uh, below the table if you want. Uh, but I felt like, um, yeah, I, I have enough with two times nine HE here. Now, I once ended up putting my mixer in here also. I have a, a pretty large mixer here in the studio that's more than nine HE. And what I did is remove two screws on this slat, angle it down, um, and then the mixer could actually look up a little bit out of this. So in the sense that, you know, I'm not sure if it's recommended because obviously it will do something to the stability, but um, you can actually add in a little bit more HE or if you know you're gonna need 10 or 11, you can order it custom with slightly taller bays. So uh, there are options, there are ways around it, but just know that you can use this as you need it. Okay, so let me take you with me now. Uh, I'm gonna go handheld here. So I'm gonna try to do this as smoothly as possible so you don't get seasick. Let me show you the table sort of from a top-down view so you get an idea of how much space uh, you have on the top to add devices. Uh, also, the angles, the way that this is done, yeah, it's it's really clever. Uh, you, the, if you use the two uh, top uh, of the bays uh, the way they're intended with maybe larger speakers, I used to actually have that also in my studio. The angle is correct. Uh, I'm using a 40-inch 4K TV from Samsung in the middle, which leaves me with enough space to place my near-field monitors next to it and then have this place uh, next to that. But yeah, overall, the size of the top table and the dimensions and the angles are just right. So ergonomically, uh, really, really well thought out desk. The top actually has a nice little uh, trick also that you see this line here. This is because these are two wooden plates and you can choose where that one will go. You can set it in lower or higher. If you set it lower, you can use this maybe to put your TFT at an angle below the speakers. Not applicable for my workflow, but it's nice to have the option. You could also set it higher into these screws and then have kind of like a raised space there for, I don't know, your controllers or a synthesizer or something. So really nice that there's a couple of options there to use it in a, in a sort of more modular way. Now, another thing that I really appreciate about, about the design is if you look here, you will see that, that there are slots here that you can run cables through from the table and also the top surface has slots cut into it so you can run cables from the bottom or actually run cables down also. So yeah, ergonomically just really nice. Also, there's like an edge, you know, on the table here so that your stuff doesn't, you know, go down off the edge and stuff like that. It's, it's just really, really well done. And the materials feel very, very sturdy. Now, one thing that I haven't liked so much about it is that I've somehow managed, for example, here to take a bit of the paint and an edge off just kind of by getting stuck in it. I don't know. I mean, you know, it could be that maybe this edge could have been sanded down a bit more or maybe I was being a bit rough with it. I don't know. I can't really tell you, but, you know, I think that's something that that shouldn't happen. So maybe these edges where there's going to be quite a lot of load and usage because they're kind of the protruding parts, maybe those could be sanded down uh, a little bit further so that they're more rounded and it's not so easy to get caught in them or maybe they could even be reinforced with something or other so that's one thing that i think could be improved other than that i have to say a big advantage of this table also is that it's very simple to put together i'm going to show you a video here of a time lapse that i did putting this to bed together on my own it took me about an hour and a half uh, basically what you get are these big panels here uh, there's two outside ones two inside ones uh, that you see there and then you get the table tops. Uh, so you build together two boxes with those outside panels. You put a whole bunch of slats, little slats that keep it together. That's basically all the black screws you see there. Basically these kind of slats, it feels very Ikea. And then once you have those two bays put together, you lay in the table on top, attach the, uh, if you've ordered it, this optional keyboard tray and you're done. So it's super easy and fast once you know how to do this and absolutely feasible to do on your own. If you need to ever move, it actually collapses into a really small package and it's super easy to transport also in a perfectly, yeah, like a normal car. You don't need a huge van or anything. And also it's quite lightweight. Uh, I've also used tables from like Argosy and other kind of big, you know, studio manufacturer, table manufacturers. And even though, of course, you know, they feel very 
very high end and very nice. They are massive and very, very heavy. And this is just the right combination for my taste of it's solid, reliable, but it's not like bulky and super heavy and complex to put apart or put together and to move with. So perfect for me. Uh, I've had it now in two studios. This is the second studio I have it in. And uh, yeah, taking it apart and putting it together hasn't caused any damage. From that point of view, really, really good. Yeah, and the cool thing, having it kind of modular with these slats is that, for example, here I've taken out a slat so I can run cables and power cables and stuff through there easily. And you know, I mean, the thing is solid. It's not going anywhere. So I'm not worried about removing one slat uh, here and there. What I did do a little bit wrong when I was putting it together the first time is that I used a power uh, drill with these uh, six angle uh, bits and I went a little bit too far so it you know it broke the paint here a bit. I'm not too fussy about things like that but if you're putting this together with power tools make sure that you set the differential right or that you do the last bit by hand. Generally the whole design down to the font of the logo and everything feels really nice and modern and clean and very well thought out. So I've actually had some contact with uh, the founder of Session Desk. Hey Lars, how you doing? And uh, yeah, and you know, you can tell that he's really passionate about this stuff and put a lot of thought and care into it. Full disclaimer, this video is in no way sponsored by them. I paid full price for this entire table. Uh, it's nice to know that the people that build these uh, do it really with the best intentions and uh, with a lot of thought behind it. These are actually produced in Portugal, where I live now. So yeah, it's, uh, it's nice to see uh, how they're able to actually create these tables. And maybe that's a really important point, which was part of the reason reason why I chose this and one of the big driving factors. This table is reasonably affordable compared to most studio tables. So I've seen it now on Toma and I think it's like 16.99 uh, euros. I know it's a lot. It's like basically a fat synthesizer. But if you're sitting for hours on end uh, in your studio the way I do almost every day, having ergonomically well-designed studio furniture is a godsend. It makes a huge difference for how it feels to, to be working in the studio. So for me, it was absolutely the right thing to get. Compared to what else is out there, it's actually a quite affordable option that I think offers a really good quality. All right, that's it. That is my long-term review of the Session Desk Gustav. I actually have it in space gray. There's a couple of other colors available. As I mentioned, uh, no affiliation, but I do love supporting companies that do great work in the audio space. If you are looking for studio furniture, I think this is definitely something that needs to be on your list of uh, desks to check out. A couple of months ago, actually, I saw that I think Audioscape is now also doing distribution in uh, the US, so you can get this on the other side of the pond, so to speak. In Europe, anyway, it's always been available. So yes, that is it. If you would like to see more content like this, please make sure to hit subscribe, ring the notification bell so you actually get uh, our videos shown to you rather than some sensationalist thumbnail crazy title about something rather that probably isn't quite worth it. And uh, yeah, I'm going to blend in a video here where I show you how I use uh, my template to make a track in real time in one hour. So if that's interesting for you, if you're an electronic musician, definitely check that out. Uh, and for the rest, I hope you have a great time in the studio. I'll see you on the next video. Bye bye.